going on, guys? Welcome back to Drink Up a Richie Tea. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, and commenting. And actually, I am joined today by Ian for Teeth, coming straight from the Tom and Tal Distillery in Scotland. It is going to be awesome. I'm super glad to have you here, brother. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, man. tell us a little something about yourself, man. Yeah, so my name is Ian for Teeth. Uh, I'm the global brand ambassador for Angus Dundee Distillers. Uh, so I look after our international markets. It's a pleasure to be here in Texas. It's Cheers. nice to get a change of weather as well. Hey. Um, but yeah, so I work for an independent um, whiskey company over in Scotland. Uh, we own two distilleries. We own Tom and Tal up in Speyside and also Glen Caddam Distillery in the Highlands. Uh, and tonight we're going to focus on some of our drams from Tom and Tal Distillery. Oh, yeah. so. Super excited, dude. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're quite a cool little place. So it's, it's one of the highest distilleries in Scotland. And we make a whiskey that's kind of known as the Gentle Dram, so kind of a sweet and kind of rounded style. Of Easy. Scotch. And as people that know the show, Breakfast Scotch is my jam. So we'll I like this jam pun there. Hey, hey yeah. man. <laughs> let's dip into the first expression. Yeah, perfect. Well, so. yeah, perfect place to start. So this is our Tom and Tal Tala. Uh, tala is uh, actually a Gallic word. That's an old Scots word for gentle. And this whiskey is made of 100% ex-bourbon casks. Uh, it's a nice kind of entry level into the Tom and Tal range. This is my poker night scotch. Super. Yeah, awesome, so I'm going to go to for... Uh, yeah, for all the bourbon drinkers, of course, they're going to like that because it's going to have that nice caramel vanilla Yeah, it's a nice it. kind of crossover as well. So you're getting that nice kind of vanilla note to it. Sancho. Sancho. Let's smell a little bit. A little dried fruit. I yeah. like it. A little sweet, of course. Get a little heavier body. Those people that have watched season one, they'll know that legs and everything, right? <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's kind of creamy and soft. It's a nice kind of inviting style. Mm. Super smooth and creamy. Mm -hmm. A little heat, get a little hug. You know what I mean? A little Kentucky hug. Yeah, <laughs> no, you know you're drinking some whiskey, which is good. And out of the expression, so how, what was aging again? Um, so this one's a non-age statement. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the whiskeys in the, the cast are in. between kind of six and eight years Six old. and eight years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes a sweet spot. Yeah, it's, it's quite nice. I mean, it's not just a run-of-the-mill three-year-old. Uh, it's a whiskey that's, that's designed for taste, not just to, to kind of meet a price. It's a good dram. Nice. Remember that one. Yeah, that's one of the ones I hadn't had. Now, the 10, of course, is another great expression that I had the first time. That was the first time until I think I ever had, yep. uh, besides the 14. Yeah, and I super, I mean, I loved it because I thought it was such a good intro for people that hadn't had a lot of scotches before. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's really, really it's, awesome. it's funny, the tent's actually a little lighter than the Tala. So I describe the tent as my kind of summertime single malt. It's a kind of softer, honeyed, more floral style. Um, and Tala came out to be a kind of different entry to that to give you something with a bit more kick. So the tent still got its nice yeah. kind of place. It's something lighter, like you say. Uh, it's, it's pretty good fun. Let's just dip in on this one, man. I've been ready to drink this one up for sure. <laughs> Cheers again. Cheers. Yeah, a little lighter vanilla. Grass. I get the grass. Yeah, definitely grassy. Grass. Yeah, true space heads are going to be like that, I think. A lot yeah. of people don't realize the true space head with that grassiness. Space head and the bourbon cask, I think everyone kind of triggers that kind of automatic assumption mm -hmm. that's going to have some sherry in there. Um. Cooler feel. Mm. A little smoother, a little lighter. More like, uh, I start describing things as like whole milk, 2% thickness wise, right? Yeah, so yeah. people can no, I understand. Like that, I like that. <laughs> I've done it, I've told a lot of people that, and they, they're like, oh, I didn't think about describing it that way. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude. This is a good dram. For sure, for someone that wants to buy something that great price point, easy to sip, and, and to, get, yeah. to branch you out of those, you know, name brands and, and into something that's a little more unique, you know, to the Absolutely. It's, kind of, it's true to its own style, but it's a, a nice, kind of smooth, kind of lighter, balanced style as well. Um, so yeah, the Talal's got a bit more spice to it. This mm -hmm. one's a bit softer on the burn. It's got just a, a kind yeah. of sweet, gentle style. Zero heat in the back end. Yeah. A little, yeah. Not as long of a finish, of no. course. Oh, like you were saying. Hmm. And having the comparison is actually really cool. I've never had them side by side. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm excited about the, the these selections today. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so, so kind of four of the casts we're going to try, or four of the expressions we're going to try are, are very much the same sort of cast type. So you're going to taste how it. How it kind of develops over time, which is pretty cool. Oh, no, dude, for real. No, it does change it, and our pals are changing the whole time we're drinking. Oh, yeah, true, true, yeah. So now, one of my favorites, the, with the Oloroso. Perfect. I'm an yeah, Oloroso yeah. cast person. I do like sherry a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, this one is um, 10 years matured in bourbon casks. So Tom and Tell Spirit is quite light and quite kind of fruity and creamy. So we actually, we use bourbon initially for our maturation for most of our stock, just to give it some body, uh, to give it some kind of shoulders, and then we finish it. For, after 10 years, we finish it in all the rest of shy butts for two years. Okay. So it's kind of a long finish, I suppose. I like that though. No, no, no. Sometimes I think that uh, they don't give it enough time with that sherry, and yeah. I think that's really cool. I did not know that. Yeah, so it's still a kind of medium body cherry style. 
Uh, and for me, this is like a kind of fruit and nut chocolate. It's kind of this kind yeah, of yeah. sweeter, creamier style of sherry rather than that big kind of chewy mm. style. Let's see what we get on this one. Yeah, cheers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, yeah, I'm smelling. I'm getting like cherries, plums. Mm -hmm. Man, even a little floral. It does have a still, has, there's still a kind of like light it. kind of floral freshness to it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's that kind of raisin brand style as well. You yeah, a little bit, yeah, 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 the raisins, yeah, yeah. <laughs> apricots. That's me dropping some Americanisms in there. I'm like, yeah, yeah raisin hey. brand, yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nice and creamy on the mouth. Super. It's probably the thickest one we've had, mm -hmm. texture-wise. Now I get the raisins. Yeah. Raisins on the back end, raisins on the middle palate for sure, and on the back, huge on the finish. Yeah. Great aftertaste. I forgot how good that was. <laughs> uh, you were talking about oh. cigars earlier. This is oh, my yeah. guy goes to someone's house for cigars. Yeah. Uh, no, it's... that would go great with, I would probably go Dominican Republic, I think. Yeah, either that or, I mean, I suppose we're privileged we get lots of Cubans, but I'd go for yeah. kind of a medium body style. You don't want anything too powerful. Too uh, but actually, because of that sweetness, it goes really well with a Maduro wrapper as well. So you can, you okay. can tie it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But... Fresh. Real yeah. fresh. I, I, I enjoy that they did it longer. That's awesome. For us, I mean, hopefully you can still taste it. It's a tom and tell. I think that's the thing. Sherry cast, especially when you've got a lighter spirit, you can sometimes find that your sherry cast is going to kind of, it can overpower the whiskey. So yeah. is this, you can still taste that tom and tell character, um, but with that nice kind of dried fruit kind of kick to it. I'm digging that right now. Thanks. That's real good. <laughs> <laughs> and now, mm. most popular, I think, right? So 16 is, is our kind of flagship style in the, in the whiskey. Uh, and, and Tom and Tell for what it is. Uh, it's also the whiskey that got me into Tom and Tell. So I tried this for the first time about eight years ago. I've worked for Angus Dundee for four and a half years. So I've been drinking this longer than I've been working for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's great. It's a really well balanced 16 year old. Uh, and it's a whiskey that I kind of describe as wearing its heart and its sleeve. And the basis that, yeah, it's got a nice nose and nice kind of palate to it, but it's quite up front and forward. So when you smell it, you kind of get that sweetness and you get that creaminess. But it's not like some of these guys where you want to sit and nose it in a dark room for 20 day. minutes. Yeah, and not um, even drink it. Yeah, yeah I'm exactly. sitting there, I'm sitting yeah, there smelling stuff like forever. People, people, alone. people think I'm weird, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is a whiskey. It's it's really well balanced. I describe this as my breakfast dram, uh, but that kind of creme. You know my, my terminology, right? That, yeah, breakfast, yeah. that breakfast dram, you can drink it anytime, and you can do it with Drink responsibly, kind of, of course. But. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah, the balance of, of sweet vanillas, Caramels, cacao nibs, I even get that in there, which is really weird. Yeah. You get a little chocolate in there. It's great. So it's 100% bourbon. Um, so this is the same continuation of these guys. Um, but you do taste how that, that extra aging gives it a different structure. So you do get a little bit of spice there. There's like that kind of, like you said, that kind of cocoa nibs, kind of it's, slightly it's, bitterness to it, which is pretty cool. It's hitting on there. And I'm, yeah. I'm, it's getting me. I like it. That grape note, mm. little grape. See, for me, I Oak. think it doesn't get old for me. I, I love that dram. I've had it so many times. I get to drink it pretty much everywhere I go, and I still really, I can still get like a nice smile on my face. It's that yeah. kind of toasty hug kind of character. Oh too. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's sweet, creamy, nutty. Oh, got I a little the, bit of spice there. Love the passion behind yeah. behind your talking for sure. Oh, that's me. I'm all hyped. Ah, oh, it's a good dram. Nice. So you know you're in good taste as well. This is actually our favorite uh, dram of our master distiller as well. Really? So, uh, okay. Robert, Robert Fleming is is like a walking whiskey encyclopedia. He trained me into a lot of what I know. I um, but he's a fourth generation distiller, so he's, he's yeah, he's, he's he literally you cut him and he bleeds whiskey. Um, <laughs> but this is his go-to as well in the Tom Tom range. So he's we're, we're aligning with the right kind of taste. I suppose. Yeah, for sure. Now so dipping into this one. Yeah, uh, and I'll let you. So we're now going to go to something a bit different. Uh, this is our 14-year-old. Uh, so this is a small batch release that we do. Uh, the other thing is this goes up to being non-chill filtered. So Tom and Tal, known as the gentle dram. A lot of our whiskeys we do are at 40 ABV. And uh, this one we jump up to 46. So you've got these kind of proteins and fatty acids still yeah. in the product. Um, so it's, it's, it's way to go though. Non-chill filtered. 85% of your flavor is coming from that barrel. I, I do enjoy that kind of style. It does give you a bit more kind of body and structure to the whiskey. Uh, a bit more heat as well, of course. Um, so it does have a bit more spice to it. Um, but this is a whiskey that, yeah, it's it's a kind of more kind of full throttle version of Tom and Tell. 
Cool thing with that too is actually that's the uh, the 14 year they have a record, don't they? Isn't it like 105 liters? Yeah, so uh, we actually, the biggest, yeah, we actually just bought that back. I don't yes, know I saw that. No, no, I yeah, saw yeah. it on Twitter. So it was a charity bottle Twitter. Uh, that we filled. Uh, so yeah, 105 liter. It was actually the um, I think it still is the world's biggest bottle of single. It bottle. is. It is. I think. I'm uh, not the world's was... biggest whiskey anymore. There was a blend that got in front of us. Oh, but, okay. Uh, single but malt. we are the uh, world's biggest bottle of single malt. It's huge. <laughs> it's massive. Yeah, yeah. 105 so liters. I think. I think it was 105.3. Yeah, 105. If I'm correct. And we, we, so we, um, yeah, we gave it to charity. It was bottled uh, back in the year 2000. Uh, and yes, yeah, so and we actually, we bought it back. It came up for sale at an auction uh, and we brought it back. That is so uh, cool. To, brought it back home. So yeah, it's now got its resting place at Tom and Tell Distillery. I keep saying we should open it for some kind of party, but people aren't so keen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The cork in it's this nice, so. Oh, for sure. That's also, well, uh, this is actually the one on my, on season one of Drink Up Richie Tea. I did a review on this. Oh, cool. Uh, I did actually spot it up here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a lot of people, yeah. And then, you know, I, we talked about original bottling, you know, original old school. Yeah. Before they, they upgraded. So, pretty <laughs> awesome. But yeah, natural color, people, so everyone knows. I mean, you think about natural color. Yeah. This is using a high that. portion of first fill bourbon casks as well. They're bourbon barrels that come straight from the U.S. to Scotland. Um, so that gives you that viscosity and also gives you quite a lot of color. Um, yeah. It's a good dram. This one's, it's got so much flavor because that non-chill filtering and yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> Sugared almonds is always the thing I taste in this one. It's kind of that, it, but it's got this lovely viscosity to it as well, this oiliness that I really dig. What do you think? It's a good dram. I'm telling you, that's why I reviewed nice. it. I loved it. It's because... <laughs> It's got that. Uh, it's got that spice. I mean, it's, but not so much. But it, it gives it levels of complexity. Yeah. That's different than just something that's so smooth. And I'm so used to cash drink stuff like we were talking about that. Yeah. You kind of you want something that a little bit more. Oh, kick to it. dude. So next, which I've never yeah. had. Yeah. So this is the controversial one because I'm not really sure where to play this in the lineup. Um, it is. It, is it does have the peat. But it's kind of medium peat. So I'll, I'll so take let's go for it. it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. So, so this is. So Tom and Tell is funny because because most of what we do is completely unpeated. So we're kind of classic space side on that basis. Uh, we're really high up. Where I say we're we're kind of up in the mountain range in the Cairngorm Mountains. Um, but for five weeks per year, we flip that on its head. And the reason I mentioned the mountain side is that um, that when you make peated whiskey, the kind of the, the flavors that you associate with peat are usually that kind of iodine, kind of briny yeah. um, sort of character, which comes from these Isla whiskeys that are kind of maturing on the coast. Yeah. Uh, which Salty. I love. Yeah, Salty. I, I really enjoy Salty. that style. Um, but this is different because this is peated whiskey, but matured in the middle of the mountains. We're nowhere near the sea. So Citrusy. It is. It's, it's a funny thing. So it still tastes like Tom and Tal. So we make it for only five weeks. Uh, and it's this kind of sweet, smoky character. So you do get the peat, but it's not that medicinal style. It's more of a kind of sooty, yeah. kind of uh, almost licorice-y kind of style. A little, yeah, for real. It's a little, I can see the licorice. Uh, since we're in the home of the Citrus. best barbecue food in the world, uh, I love hey. this pair with like a fatty brisket. Or, oh, yeah. Or like ribs, something that's... Steaks. Like, yeah, it's, steak it's, all day. it's spot on. So you get that kind of, you get that sweetness that marries almost like a wine with that smokiness, which is kind of go really well with that smoky. And I love you, Petey. Pete's up in the front. You know, it's actually not even smoky. Mm. It's just a creamy peat. Uh, yeah. Creamy peat to it. And psh. Hmm. Leaves a nice kind of finish. Never, never had that. That's awesome. I would drink that, you know, just every day. Yeah. Because I like that little peat taste, little kick sometimes. So if you're into mixed drinks as well, one of my yeah. favorite things to do with this is to make a Boulevardier. So uh, it's okay. a, a peat and Negroni effect. Mine's like a penicillin. Uh, it's really great in a penicillin too. Yeah. Um, funnily enough, there's also the a bigger brother of this called Old Ballantrune, which isn't that available in the US, but it's a higher peated version. Um, so I like to do uh, penicillin with this, with an old bound and float yeah. on top. It's good fun. Uh, but yeah, Boulevardier with this is awesome because that kind of, that smokiness really marries with the, um, with the kind of martini and the Campari element mm -hmm. too, uh, without it being too powerful. Now I'm hyped. So, about to dip into the since I am a few uh, thousand miles away from home, I did want to bring you some, uh, some special editions as well. I'd say it is a pleasure to be on uh, yeah. with you tasting some special drams. Um, so we're going to go for it. We're going to start with our Tom and Tell 21 year olds. I've also brought a 25 and a 37, uh, which is quite rare, so don't try and find it too easily. It's, but <laughs> yeah, it's a little, a little hard to come by. You can um, find it, uh, but you know, it's going to have a little more cost. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really interested in your thoughts on this one because yeah. the 21 is a really kind it's of fresh old school style. And so this is 100% bourbon cask as well, so this follows suit from the 16. Um, but I'll let you describe the nose in this before I tell you what I think it smells like. It's quite specific. Well, definitely almonds. Yeah. 
And of course, as everybody knows, I'll sit here and smell stuff for 30 minutes, but you know, we're not gonna <laughs> get more cherries and strawberry. It's a really interesting I one. I get cause... woody oaks, but not like, yeah. it's like a, a nice little char, but not, it's not overly oaky. No, it's, it's a funny one because it's old and you get this kind of musty character to it, but then there's these really nice kind of fresh fruit notes, like kind of red cherry in there, which mm -hmm. is quite, quite kind of strange for an older whiskey, for an older malt. Um, how'd, I, how'd I do? You did pretty well. So the one that- Grapefruit. Grapefruit is definitely up there. I was like, the, I had to taste it first. The, the one that, uh, it was actually a customer mentioned it to me, um, that kind of, uh, that stuck with me since, is Turkish Delight. And I never I never articulated that before in smelling it, but I get that kind of, that sweet kind of rose petaly character to it. And the other thing I always think it smells a bit like is furniture polish, but in like a quite a good way. It's got yeah, like kind of waxy okay. beeswax. It's, got the, it's, it's waxy, yeah, yeah, definitely. Not, um, not a bad, it's, it's, it's got that, that texture to it. Yeah. It's like silky, like lavender. Mm. I got a lot of lavender too. It's, it's, Damn, it's not awesome. massively sweet, which I like. It's got a kind of herbal freshness to it. Um, but the finish oh, is really long. I can see the herbal. Uh, Damn, and it's that awesome. kind of cedar woody kind of spice that just sits oh. on the tongue. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something a bit special. That's um, a good dram. It's interesting because the tomantel is really sweet up till there, and then afterwards it kind of curves off. You get more of that kind of spice and more of the wood coming through. But yeah, I, I think it's really fun, something different. Mm. Anyway, two more for you to try. I feel bad pouring that way. Um, the next one, the line that I'm going to show you uh, is actually just come back into your shores. So it's literally just been re released. Really? I haven't seen the 25 um, at all. We That's ran out of stock of this. Uh, it comes in its own coffin to make sure that it survives, which neatly doubles up as a pillow if, uh, if you have too many. That's cool. Show that. Um, <laughs> but this is our Tomatel 25 year olds. Um, this stuff is awesome. Uh, it's quite different to the 21 that we just tried. This is like big, spicy, and biscuity. Um, Pop that yeah. boy. There we go. Maybe rip that open real quick. Pillow. <laughs> uh, irresponsible. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> After you had too many, you got to sleep somewhere. Well, yeah, exactly. I, when the box is empty, <laughs> it's commiseration. No, um, so here's the 25. Um, this is bottled at 43, so it does take a little bit of a step up in the alcohol. Um, but again, what's quite interesting is that there is a diversity within the flavor profile because obviously, I mean, there's only four years between this and the 21, but they're totally different spirits. Uh, and we wouldn't release them if they tasted the same because that would be kind of, yeah, yeah. defeats the purpose. But for me, this one's much more that kind of burnt sugary, kind of toffee on the nose, that kind of sweet kind of clove spice. Cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon. Um, but yeah, so this is more kind of rich and robust. A little charred, it is a little more, you know, I actually dig this one even more now. Yeah, it's not a, expensive it's not as, taste. Yeah, <laughs> that's what my mom says, right? <laughs> my family. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 pretty special. It's just got a lot of so like front to back palate. I'm tasting so many different things with every dram, mm. every sip. Yeah, I want to. When you're talking apart. about the, these whiskeys that you can nose for half an hour, I mean, uh, this, I'll is, pick this these is the apart. kind of thing that yeah, it's. Uh, you want to? You don't really want to rush it. You want to get to get to know mm. it. Of course, we we'll, we'll appreciate these later. Mm, of course. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Bring on the thirty-seven. So yeah, and then this one is uh, a little special just because because I'm here and because you're you're having me, and it's a pleasure to Dude. be the first episode in season two as well. It's pretty cool to see. Um, I thought I'd bring you something which is very rare. Um, Super rare. So this was a bottling that was only ever released for the United States. Uh, it's a 37-year-old special reserve. I want to thank you for bringing that to me, the 37. It's uh, it's beautiful. We we haven't made this in a while. Um, you in fact, the honors. You're, uh, you're the man who looks after your uh, Texas market, Todd Holder, is the guy you need to thank for this. He arranged the sample. Um, because there's not many of these available in the United States. Um, we never got it for the UK. We had a 1976 reserve, which was kind of similar. Um, but if you don't tell anybody, I actually preferred your 37 year old. I love this. Uh, so I, it's quite nice to try again. <laughs> yeah. Sandra, no. Sandra. Yeah, cheers. Oh, uh, yeah. Sweetness, fruits. See, I, I love old malt when it becomes really fruity. I think it's really remarkable that you've got something that's 37 years old but smells like fresh fruits. You're getting kind of stone fruit in there. Um, <sighs> So good, dude. <laughs> That's a good tasting note. I'll take that. 
the light body. The sip, I'm getting like so many different things from everything from a little gaminess to fruit to oranges. I mean, it's 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 unreal. So, dude, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Thank you very it's much. It's so Cheers. awesome that you could be thank here you. and come from Scotland to it's be here with me. I hope we can catch up next time on the talk. Dude, we're going to do it. Uh, guys, make sure you are drinking up a Rich Tea, of course, uh, hitting Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you're subscribing, commenting. Make sure you are going to watch the, listen to the podcast on Food and Beverage Magazine Podcast Network. And, I mean, until next time, guys, uh, let's drink up, man. Yeah, pleasure. Cheers, guys. Thank you.